There are countless fantasy animes, all with similar things like magic, waifus, demon kings. But how did this white haired elf girl rise above the rest of them, even being the longest anime to dethrone Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood as the number one ranked spot on my anime list? And is Free Ren Beyond Journeys End really the masterpiece of a manga that people are hyping it up to be? The story of Free Ren Beyond Journeys End actually starts after it's already ended, following along the priest Heiter, the dwarf warrior Aizen, a hero called Himmel, and of course the elven maid. Freerin. Fryrin? Fryerin? I'm just gonna say Freerin, that's how they say it in the dub. And you see all the unforgettable bonds and precious memories that they created on this journey. But after finishing their journey, Freerin goes on to just live her usual life, thinking nothing more to the time that they spent together. And this is when we get into the main premise of the story, and its realization of the concept of death. Freerin being an elf, the time that she spent with these party mates was just a small fraction of her life as she's lived over a thousand years. But with her party mates being humans, their death is final and it comes a lot sooner than she might have expected. And after feeling a sense of regret for not cherishing the time that they spent together, she vows to better understand humans and create real personal connection. And after the once memorable journey has ended, a new one is about to begin. But this isn't a journey taking them to defeat another demon king. I mean, they've already done that. This is going to be something much, much deeper. <laughs> There comes a few anime that you watch that don't affect you as just an anime fan, but they actually affect you as a living human person. And that brings me to the first point on why I feel that this anime has resonated with fans so much and why it's being so highly rated. If you play any games, which I'm sure a lot of you do, there's one type of game you're seeing coming out a lot right now, and that's remasters. It's no secret that as we grow older, we're a generation that feels an immense amount of nostalgia. Whether if it's that we feel like we didn't truly appreciate what we had at the time when we were playing these games or watching these shows, or if we didn't truly appreciate the time period and the moment that we were living in. As humans, knowing that time is always going to move forward and you can never go to the past is something that we almost struggle with. And that is the exact feeling that Freewin is able to perfectly capture in its anime. Freewin almost has all the time you can ever imagine in the world. She's going to live for thousands of years. So to her, this 10 years that she spent with these people was the equivalent of if you were to have just a quick conversation with someone in a short elevator ride. But it's as she sees her party mates start to age and she sees them pass away that she starts to realize these missed opportunities and the moments that she maybe didn't fully treasure at the moment. It's a realization that you'll never be able to experience that time again, but you feel like you want to. It's moments like that to where you're watching and you're just like, wow, this... This anime is pretty deep, isn't it? Like this is some pretty heavy topics. And not only is it pretty deep, but you're watching it through the eyes of a white haired elf waifu, which is gonna bring to the next part on why this is such a highly rated manga. And it's simply Freerin herself. There is no better protagonist you can have for the story other than Freerin. Freerin is more than just your normal anime elf waifu. She's also an insanely powerful mage that knows almost everything about magic and can pretty easily dispel of any enemies in her way. But at the same time, this doesn't make her too insanely overpowered as if she's some perfect character, she does have her flaws. Freerin is a master procrastinator and she always gives herself ample amount of time to complete whatever tasks that she has. And this is shown pretty early on when Heiter gives her a task to translate a spell of immortality and initially she takes a long time to complete it until she sees his health start to deteriorate and she completes it in only just a few weeks. Showing that she had the capability to complete it pretty quickly but to her with having so much time she didn't feel that it was necessary. And who better to tell a story about having a limited amount of time other than someone who feels like they have unlimited amount of time. Now I don't think that it's necessarily too bad of a thing that she does procrastinate as especially in today's fast-paced society and always short form content. Freewin shows you the importance of sometimes just slowing down and enjoying the time that you're in. Now aside from all the deep sentimental stuff that I'm sure you hear everybody glorify this anime for, at its core, it is just genuinely a good anime. Freerun was produced by Studio Madhouse, the famous anime studio that made the banger known as Marvel's Future Avengers. I mean, everybody loved that one, right? I mean, seriously though, look at what Madhouse has produced. Let's go down the list. They made Death Note, One Punch Man, Hunter x Hunter, No Game No Life, Parasite, Death Parade, Overlord, High School of the Dead, Trigun, Red Line, the best anime movie by the way, and Monster. So yeah, safe to say Studio Madhouse was almost the perfect candidate to start making this anime. And it paid off for them because the success of the anime has also benefited the success of the free written manga as well, propelling it to now more than 17 million copies in circulation. And speaking 
speaking of the manga, another reason why this is so amazing is it doesn't reinvent the wheel. This is almost a one-to-one -one recreation of what the manga is. I mean, seriously, the dialogue is almost exact to what the manga is. And that's a good thing because the manga is amazing as well. And you just watch a clip playing in the background right now for proof of it. There are countless mangas and I'm sure you can think of as well that they change from the manga and it ends up ruining the anime. I mean, look at Promised Neverland and unfortunately what happened to that. Yeah. But obviously, we're not all the way through the free run manga, but so far, if we just take this first season for as it is, it's a great adaptation. And although this isn't mainly about fighting in it, when you do get to the fight scenes and you see them animate the magic that free run uses, Madhouse knows how to animate. And you also get scenes like this of free run. I mean, just look. Yeah. This is anime of the year for sure. Now, Free Run is almost an anomaly of an anime to me because the pacing is almost at times abnormally slow, kind of like animes were back in the 90s and before. And the art style, it's pretty modest. It's not too flashy. And the music is pretty tame. It's not over the top. It doesn't pop like a lot of animes you see now. And that's almost the opposite of what anime has became now. And that may seem like an odd choice on why they decided to do it this way, but the only explanation I can give for it is really that it doesn't need any of those things. All it really needed was a main theme and to tell as great of a story as it can based off of that. And that's exactly what they did. It almost feels like a breath of the most crisp refreshing air when you're watching it. You don't see all the overtop animation and this blaring pop music in the background. You're a little bit just more calm and taking it in for what it is. You almost feel just a little bit cozy watching it. Now, Free Rin feels more than just an anime. It's a work of art. It's a narrative masterpiece that delves into such heavy topics such as the flow of time, the importance of friendships and the people you meet, the importance of never taking life for granted, and most importantly, emotion. Now comes time for the hot debate. Is Free Run Beyond Journey's End truly the masterpiece that people are saying? Is it an almost 10 out of 10 anime? Is it better than Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? Now is Free Run a masterpiece of an anime? And that one hands down very much yes, it's a masterpiece. The story that it's able to tell and the emotions it makes you feel when you're watching it, like I mentioned in the beginning, it's truly the type of anime that goes beyond just being an anime because it almost changes you as a person. Now, is it better than Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? Is it better than all of these other animes you can compare it to? I really don't even feel like that should be a debate because at the end of the day, who really cares? Yeah, you may like this one more than the other, and yeah, this one may be subjectively better than the other, but that's not what watching Free Run is about. You're not watching it to watch what's considered the best anime of all time. You're watching it to embrace the story that it's telling. So for that, I'm saying that it's a masterpiece and it's definitely a manga I would pretty easily recommend to just about anybody. Me personally, gave it a solid 9 out of 10. Is it a perfect anime? Probably not. I don't think there's such thing as that. But is it one that you should watch? The answer to that is obviously yes. 